Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and today I'm going to be talking about the Welcome Book Prize of 2018. Now if you've been watching my channel for a while or if you've been watching Caitlin from Kitty G's channel you'll know that myself and Caitlin are doing a a collaboration together where we're reading books from previous Welcome Book Prize um, shortlisters and winners and we are currently I think up to 2015 so we've got a couple of years left to go but the 2018 long list has just been announced and we're both really excited to read some of these books so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading the books that we planned for this month and then we have picked some books off this long list which we're both going to be reading and doing a show next month and then going back to our backlist after that because we'd really like to get on top of the 2018 list so without further ado let me talk to you about the list if you have no idea hear what i'm talking about and you're like what what's the welcome book prize what's she talking about i will link up here in the cards the video i did on the welcome book prize when we first started and uh, you can find out all the details you want to there so let's talk about this year's long list stay with me by Ayubami Adebayo. The Butchering Art, Joseph Lister's Quest to Transform the Grizzly World of Victorian Medicine by Lindsay Fitzharris. In Pursuit of Memory, by The Fight Against Alzheimer's by Joseph Gibelli. Plot 29, A Memoir by Alan Jenkins. The White Book by Han Kang. With the End in Mind, Dying, Death and Wisdom in an Age of Denial by Catherine Mannix. Midwinter Break by Bernard McClaverty. To Be a Machine, Adventures Among Cyborgs, Utopians, Hackers and the Futurists Solving the Modest Problem of Death by Mark O'Connell. I Am, I Am, I Am, 17 Brushes with Death by Maggie O'Farrell. Mayhem, a memoir by Sigrid Rorsing. Behave, The Biology of Humans at Our Best and Worst by Robert Sapolsky. The Vaccine Race, How Scientists Use Human Cells to Combat Killer Viruses by Meredith Wadman. So there's 12 on the long list. The short list is going to be announced on the 20th of March and then the winner will be announced on the 30th of April. So our plan is to read three each. Uh, we picked three that we were both interested in we'll do a live show talking about those in March and then we'll just all wait and see which one is picked in April and whether ours make the shortlist and whether our tipped out of the six um, makes the final and is the winner so it'll be interesting to see so I'm going to be reading Stay With Me by Ayubami Adebayo and this is a story of a couple they get married and uh, within their culture it's quite normal for a man to take more than one wife but they decide very early on but that they are not interested in that and they're just going to be the two of them he won't take any more wives and then a number of years later um, she is struggling to have children and a woman turns up on the doorstep with another woman in tow saying that this is his second wife um, she's struck with jealousy and so she then um, tries at all costs to become pregnant she finally becomes pregnant but we don't know um, at what cost that is and it's a look into that I think this one sounds really good it's got really good ratings on Goodreads so I'm really excited to be reading that one so the next one I'm going to be reading is non-fiction and that is Behave the biology of humans at our best and worst by Robert M Sapolsky so I'm going to read a little bit from um, the Goodreads description here because this is um, it sounds really interesting but I've only just sort of decided that this is one I'm going to read too um, it says why do we do things we do more than a decade in the making this game-changing book is Robert Sapolsky's genre shattering attempt to answer that question as fully as perhaps only he could looking at it from every angle Sapolsky's storytelling concept is delightful but it also has a powerful intrinsic logic he starts by looking at the factors that bear on a person's reaction in the precise moment a behavior occurs and then hops back in time from there in stages ultimately ending up at the deep history of our species and its evolutionary legacy and so the first category of explanation is the neurobiological one a behavior occurs whether an example of humans at our best or worst 
first or somewhere in between. What went on in a person's brain a second before the behaviour happened? Then Sapolsky pulls out a slightly larger field of vision a little earlier in time. What sight, sound or smell caused that nervous system to produce that behaviour? And then what hormones acted hours to days earlier to change how responsive that individual is to the stimuli that triggered the nervous system? But now he has increased our field of vision so that we are thinking about neurobiology and the sensory world of environment and adoc endocrinology in trying to explain what happened. Sapolsky keeps going. How was that behaviour influenced by structural changes in the nervous system over the preceding months by that person's adolescence, childhood, fetal life and then back to his or her genetic makeup? Finally, he expands the view to encompass factors larger than one individual. How did culture shape that individual's group? What ecological factors, millennia old, form that culture? And on and on and on back to evolutionary factors millions of years old. The result is one of the most dazzling toward toward the horizon of the science of human behaviour ever attempted, a majestic synthesis that harvests cutting-edge research across a range of disciplines to provide a subtle and nuanced perspective on why we ultimately do the things we do. For good and for ill, Sapolsky builds on this understanding to wrestle with some of our deepest and thorniest questions relating to tribalism, xenophobia, hierarchy and competition, morality and free will, and war and peace. Why is humane very often funny, Behave is a towering achievement, powerfully humanising and downright heroic in its own right. Wow, that sounds pretty amazing. And I think I might try and go along the same route as I did last time with an audiobook if there is one of this, because I found when I read Far From The Tree, which I loved last month and if you want to know more about that check out our last welcome book prize chat um i loved that and i really enjoyed listening to that on audio i think i find non-fiction better on audiobook i don't know why so i might see if that is on audio but that is the second one that i'm going to be reading and then the third and final one that i'm going to be reading is um to be a machine adventures among cyborgs Utopians, Hackers and Futurists Solving the Modest Problem of Death by Mark O'Connell. Um, and again, I'm going to read you the blurb for this one. It's meet the visionaries, billionaires, professors and programmers who are using groundbreaking technology to push the limits of our human body, our of the human body, our senses, intelligence, and our lifespans. Once relegated to the fringes of society, transhumanism, the use of technology to enhance human intellectual and physical capability, is now poised to enter our cultural mainstream. It has found adherents in Silicon Valley billionaires Ray Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis, Google has entered the picture, establishing a biotech subsidiary aimed to solving the problem of ageing. In To Be A Machine, journalist Mark O'Connell takes a headlong dive into this burgeoning movement. He travels to the laboratories, conferences and basements of today's foremost transhumanists, where he's presented with the staggering possibilities and moral quandaries of new technologies like mind uploading, artificial superintelligence, cry cryonics and device implants. A contributor to Slate, The New Yorker and The New York Times magazine, O'Connell serves as a sharp and lively guide to the outer limits of technology in the 21st century. In investigating what it means to be a machine, he offers a surprising singular meditation on what it means to be human. So I'm really excited about that. I've picked one fiction and two non-fiction and I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into all of them. Caitlin has picked a different three to me to be reading and as I say we'll be talking about those in March and yeah there is a good short list this time, a long list this time uh, but those were the three that stood out to me that I think will be of interest to me. So yeah let me know if you've read any of these and if you recommend um, any of the ones that I haven't picked off the long list because you've read them and you think it's really worth a read and something you think I'd like let me know I'd really like to know maybe I'll add a few more to my list but that is the long list that's the ones that I'm going to be reading and yeah I look forward to chatting to you about them in March. Bye for now booktube!